Hello, Unity developers. Welcome to part two on making a multiplayer 2D platform game. In this video, we are going to talk about how the non-player characters work in Socket Weaver networked games, and we will use the static non-player network ID to synchronize enemies in the game. In a Socket Weaver powered multiplayer game, the game server will select one player to be the host player of a room. The host player automatically becomes the owner of all the NPCs in the game. The host player simulates the game logic of the NPCs and sends their states to the Socket Weaver game server. And the game server broadcasts the NPCs' states to other players in the game. If the host player got disconnected from the game, the game server will reselect a new host for the game. And the new host will take the ownership on the NPCs in the game. And this happens seamlessly in the background. If the old host reconnects to the game, it will receive updates of the NPCs from the new host. So I'm going to add a real-time agent to the enemy prefab. And let's take a closer look at the network ID component. I'm going to set it to non-player, and I will disable dynamically spawned. And I'm going to assign a fixed network object ID to it. I'm going to apply the changes to the enemy prefab. In the game scene, we have three enemies, so I'm going to assign different ID to them. And next, I'm going to configure the real-time agent. I'm going to enable transform, and I'm going to enable X and Y for the enemy positions. And I will configure the compress settings. And don't forget to apply the changes to the enemy prefab. I'm going to add the network inspector to the scene, and it will show us the bandwidth usage of the game, and we can build the game now. So the players have connected to the game. The blue line indicates the upload bandwidth, and the pink line is the download bandwidth. We started the game in the editor first, so the editor is the host player. You can see that the host player is uploading the NPC's states, and the other player is downloading it. And now I'm going to stop the game in the editor. Notice that the upload bandwidth of the game client bumped up immediately, because it is simulating the NPCs and uploading their states. And now I'm going to reconnect editor to the game. Notice that the editor is receiving the NPC states now. I want to mention that the real-time agent only uploads states if they are changed. So if you don't move the character, the bandwidth usage will be very low. The game scene is very small, but in a real 2D platformer, you might have hundreds of enemies in the game. So I prepared a bigger scene with about 40 enemies in it. We're going to test that and see how much data it will consume. So the players are connected. I'm going to look at the scene window. All the enemies are simulated and synchronized, even for the ones that are invisible to the players, and that's wasting bandwidth and money. In the next video, I will show you how you can optimize the game to only synchronize visible enemies. And thank you for watching. See you in the next one.